Twitch has indefinitely suspended advertising on Amaranth's channel, so today we're going to be talking about everything. So a move like this brings up a ton of questions, right? A lot of people are asking, was this the correct move on Twitch's part? Where exactly did Twitch mess up here? Because they're definitely not all in the clear. And then there's still the debate on whether or not hot tub streams or Amaranth streams are good for Twitch in general. I saw a lot of people celebrating this and I think it's for all the wrong reasons. Just so we're clear, this is an incel free zone, okay? If you're here to hate on women, th th I'm sorry, but that's not what you're gonna get. Anyway, let's take a look at her Twitter really quickly. It says yesterday, I was informed that Twitch has indefinitely suspended advertising on my channel. Twitch didn't reach out in any way whatsoever. I had to initiate the conversation after noticing without any prior warning, all the ad revenue had disappeared from my channel analytics. She goes on to say, this is an alarming precedent and serves as a stark warning that although content may not ostensibly break community guidelines or terms of service, Twitch has complete discretion to target individual channels and partially or wholly demonetize them for content that is deemed not advertiser friendly, something that they're there is no communicated guideline for. This leaves open-ended the question of where the line is drawn. Many people complain about TOS being unclear, but at least there's something to go by. There is no known policy for what results in a streamer being put on this blacklist. With characteristic opacity, the only thing Twitch made clear is that it is unclear whether or when my account can be reinstated. Now look, Amaranth is a big figure on Twitch, right? Just objectively, she's a big figure. She performs really, really well on the platform. A lot of people seem to like her and she does what she does very well and we're going to talk a little bit more about her later i have nothing against her and what she does honestly i do think she's being a little intellectually dishonest here when she says that she's not necessarily breaking the terms of service technically she's not but she's a smart woman okay she knows she is at best in a gray area and we could sit here and we could split hairs and be like is what she's doing considered soft girl porn because lingerie modeling it, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter at the end of the day because of her hot tub streams twitch decided to remove advertising revenue from her channel now keep in mind this doesn't mean she's gonna go broke right she obviously it seems like she can still get bits and subs right she didn't mention that at all in these tweets so it's not like she's just not getting paid by twitch anymore but the big question is, is this the correct move by Twitch? And you know, did Twitch mess up here? Honestly, not only was this the right move for them to do, but it was inevitable. Twitch was eventually going to have to address the hot tub streams on their platform, whether you like it or not. Just like any other social media platform or content platform or anything like that, the platform is run by ad revenue. It just is. Having hot tub streams so easily discoverable and prominent in the just chatting section sets the precedent that semi-sexual content is accepted on Twitch. And I know some people might argue that just being in a hot tub isn't in itself a sexual act. I get that. But it would be super disingenuous to watch one of these streams and say that it's completely non-sexual. People have been saying for weeks now that all it would take is for one underage girl to perform the exact same type of content for Twitch to be shut down entirely. And that's how you know it's sexual by nature, because if it was done by someone who was underage, everybody would be super uncomfortable about it and everything would be up in flames. So I think most of us can agree that these hot tub streams are generally sexual in nature. I am not speaking for every woman on Twitch, right? But in this instance with Amaranth, of course, they were at least semi-sexual in nature. And that type of content makes Amaranth a brand risk and by extension, all hot tub streamers that perform these types of hot tub streams similar to hers on Twitch, therefore make Twitch a brand risk for the advertising clients. And if Twitch is going to stay a brand risk, advertisers have no reason to spend their budget here because their budget would be spent way more effectively and way more efficiently on YouTube. YouTube has a much bigger audience than Twitch does and even has some of the same creators, right? Most big Twitch streamers have YouTube channels as well. YouTube has a dynamic system of ads. If Coca-Cola doesn't want to be on certain risky types of content, they can just opt out of putting their, their ads on that type of content and they're in the clear, but they don't have the option of doing that on Twitch as of right now. So when advertisers approach Twitch and they see all of these hot tub streams, they immediately think there's a possibility that when we spend our money here, 
our ad could show up during one of these hot tub streams, which is a brand risk for them. So having content like hot tub streams on a platform like Twitch effectively lowers the amount of ad revenue that all creators are getting across the board. And for weeks, people have been saying, why doesn't Twitch just ban these hot tub streamers? But they can't, right? Because they're not explicitly breaking the terms of service, but also they would get a lot of backlash for being non-inclusive and for specifically targeting female creators. I mean, this seems to be a problem specifically with female creators right because they can't just say you can't have hot tub streams because then any man who gets in a hot tub on twitch would therefore also have to be banned so then that brings up the question is it sexist to punish a female for non-nude content that apparently doesn't explicitly break the tos now this is just my personal opinion but honestly i don't really think so i mean clothed content can still be sexual by nature i mean using amaranth as an example she literally used her streams to promote her only fans where she posted content that was even more suggestive and again, I don't actually blame Amaranth for doing that. I just don't really think it belongs on Twitch. A lot of people love to say that, you know, these hot tub streamers have it so easy because they're young and beautiful and, and they just get these viewers, but that's not true, right? Because there's tons of hot tub streamers that don't have anywhere near the amount of viewers that Amaranth has, which means she must be doing something extra. She must be putting in more hours. She must be putting in more work. She must know more about social media and marketing and getting attention and all this stuff. And I'm not white knighting here. Like it's literally, she is literally standing out above the crowd of people who are trying to do exactly what she's doing. If you look at her growth numbers, she is objectively just doing something different and better. So she deserves her success. But again, I just don't think it's, it belongs on Twitch. So we've covered why the hot tub meta content isn't necessarily good for Twitch. And we've also covered whether or not this was the correct move by Twitch, which I think it was. But where Twitch messed up is that they didn't reach out to her in any way whatsoever. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Asmund Gold was messaging her on his own live stream. And she even said that her partner manager didn't even know that this was happening to clarify not lying about twitch not communicating to be fair they didn't even tell my partner manager <laughs> the partner manager didn't even know it. dude that's that's big so twitch clearly did this in the worst way possible and i know a lot of people might say who cares we got her but that's the complete wrong attitude because what if it happens to one of the creators that you like to enjoy for seemingly no reason at all and that's the problem by not communicating with her they didn't give her the opportunity to change her content or do something different i mean it's not like she wasn't gonna notice right like come on maybe they were afraid that if they messaged her she would put them on blast on social media and say hey they're coming at me for being a woman now i see a lot of people saying, well, why don't we just have a separate category for the hot tub streams? And it's just an explicit category where you can do things that, you know, don't break the TOS, but are obviously a gray area. The problem is that this still is not going to solve the problem of perception. By allowing these types of streams on the platform at all, people are going to associate Twitch with that place that has the hot tub streams. Now, not everybody's going to think that, but enough people will think that to influence how advertisers spend their money, which is ultimately what's going on here. Think of it like, like this if somebody tells you they have an only fans you immediately think that they probably post some sort of pornographic content it may not be nude but you know it's it's probably suggestive in some way the truth is there are plenty of only fans accounts out there that just post regular content right now of course it's got to be interesting in some way but there are channels and there are accounts on only fans that are non-pornographic but just in general you could post pictures of your lego collection or your favorite video games like only fans isn't explicitly a pornographic site even though it is mostly used that way so the user perception of only fans is what would happen to twitch if they continue to allow hot tub streams like this on their platform even if it's in a separate category if coca-cola thinks that twitch is the place where there's hot tub streams they might as well just put their money on youtube because it's just it's much safer for them and it doesn't have that brand risk the right thing to do would have been to set up on the back end some sort of way of classifying streamers as either low medium or high high risk since twitch doesn't have a way of monitoring streams in real time they would have to do this manually of course they would effectively only have to do it manually for the top 500 or a thousand streams because that's where 99 percent of the ads are going to go anyway but had they just reached out to her and said hey this is the new system that we're going with and based on your recent streams for the past 30 or 60 days, you are considered a high risk streamer. And therefore there's no way that we can put ads on your channel. Now, of course they shouldn't have targeted her specifically. There's plenty of other streamers that are doing exactly what she's doing. So I all think we can agree that more communication here would have been preferred, but it's also worth noting that YouTube just bans content all the time for seemingly no reason. I mean, they have an automated system that does it right. So if you're, if for whatever reason, your account gets flagged and take it down or something like that, getting it back is usually not that easy unless you're a really big content 
creator. So of course this is controversial for Twitch because this is the beginning of what is probably going to be some sort of adpocalypse. It's something we've already seen on other platforms before and shouldn't really be that surprising. And again, because a dynamic advertising system on Twitch would take a, a ton of effort to actually build a lot of money years to do it. Twitch is much smaller than YouTube, which does have a platform like this. And I just don't know if they would be willing to invest all those resources into Twitch. So the only way to do it is to categorize these streamers. The reason that removing advertising on specific creators channels is the best way to go is because this is a way to address the hot tub streamers like Amaranth without having to ban them while simultaneously knowing that the problem will probably eventually solve itself. If hot tub streamers are making less money from Twitch, they will either leave the platform to do the same type of content somewhere else or they will change their content to make their time on Twitch more worthwhile and earn back that ad revenue. The only problem with this solution is that with a streamer like Amaranth, as big as she is, she could still go live on Twitch with the exact same type of content. And even though she doesn't make ad revenue, she's still going to make so much money from subscribers, from bits, from donations, and from the small percentage of her viewers that will convert to OnlyFans subscribers. Only time will tell how this is going to play out, but I don't think this is the last time that you're going to see Twitch pull advertising revenue from particular streamers on the platform guys I know this is not typically the type of content that I make here on this channel but I'm trying to branch out a little bit and honestly twitch is a place that I care about a ton I watch twitch pretty much every single day either on the platform or I'm watching twitch creators over on YouTube as well so I'm really passionate about the platform and this just seems like a really important topic to talk about with that being said if you enjoyed this content make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a video comment down below what you think about twitch's decision to remove the advertising revenue from Amaranth's stream was it the right move should they have been more transparent definitely want to hear from you guys as always, my social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, Twitch, everything. It's always down below. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.